Amen. Hey, we're going to sing that song together, as you can tell in your songbook. Thank you for coming back out here this evening at Gospel Light. Why don't you join me in standing? We're going to sing all together on page number 91 in your songbook there. It's a familiar one. What a day that will be, page number 91. Let's sing this song together. Lift your voice on that first. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. And there'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to share, no more sin no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be, who died for me, what a day, glorious day that will be, what a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Leads me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Go over one page there to number 92. Page number 92, some morning you'll find me touring that city. We'll continue this theme of heaven and the future, as Pastor preached about this morning, the future, amen. Let's sing together on this one. Here we go. Many times I have wondered about the sights of that city and all that my eye shall behold. I will see all the wonders when I enter that city, there forever to be safe in his fold. Some morning you'll find me touring that city where the Son of God is the light. You'll find me there on the street so pretty, made of gold so pure and so bright. With Jesus the one who gave me the victory, who led me across the divine. Some morning you'll find me touring that city, where with Him I will ever abide. On that last, here on earth we have troubles that to us seem so heavy, but in heaven no one will be sad. Mom and Dad will be singing Heaven's praise will be ringing for the dearest friend I ever had. Some morning you'll find me touring that city where the Son of God is the light. You'll find me there on the street so pretty, made of gold so pure and so bright. Jesus, the one who gave me the victory, who led me across the divide. Some morning you'll find me touring that city, where with him I'll ever abide. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Yes, amen. We're so glad you're here on this Sunday night. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. And we're so thankful for these Sunday nights. And uh, we appreciate you being here. We want to see...
these grow as we go forward. We'll tell you next week something we'll be doing also on some Sunday nights just for a very special time. Uh, but we're so thankful for all of what uh, the Lord has done here for people. We're so thankful for your faithfulness. What a blessing it is. Well, right on the first day, first day of 2023, and uh, you started out right in church this morning, in church tonight. And I uh, want to commend you and encourage you in that. We'll push out uh, some invites and messages in this week. Uh, just to encourage people to start out the year right, which uh, some of them obviously missed the first, but uh, they hopefully will be right here on the 8th for our Vision Sunday uh, as we go forward. So uh, we're just thankful for, for the Lord's goodness. And uh, let's pray, if we would, and let's ask for the Lord's blessing upon uh, just every part of the service now this evening. The Heavenly Father, we come to you and we just thank you for your grace and your goodness. We thank you for uh, your love for us and for your church. Jesus, you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so we thank you, Lord. This is your church. Uh, and we just rejoice you, and we, and we rejoice in that, we praise you for it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so we thank you for those that are here tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would just really bless tonight. I pray that you would bless Sunday nights as we go forward through 2023. This can be such a great uh, equipping time, just really uh, equipping us for ministry and for strong Christian living. Uh, also can really challenge us and strengthen us in our walk with you and our spiritual leadership in our life as you would have for us to be able to do more uh, with others and working with others and leading others. So Lord, just really bless in this time now. Bless Brother Jeremy as he be preaching for us and just lead in this time we'd ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and join me in standing. We're seeing one more together, page number 31. I know that you know this one, page number 31, Build My Mansion. We'll sing this song together. It's got two verses. Shake hands after this. Sing it out with me now. I have no castle, no earthly kingdom, but my cabin will do till I get home. My mansion's yonder on the hills of glory. Oh, I hope my mansion it's near God's throne. Just build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. It doesn't matter who lives around me, just so my mansion sits near God's throne. take the opportunity to shake hands this evening make it around get to everybody shake hands spread the love of christ and a good smile
you welcome someone and someone welcomed you, it's so important for us to have a strong growing fellowship amongst ourselves and getting to know one another. Uh, and so you, um, uh, you just take advantage of those times if you would. Uh, sometimes they say it's awkward, but on a Sunday night it's perfect, amen? Because we really need to get to know one another in that way. So some exciting things right here at the first of the year. Uh, some of them you might have heard this morning, but we want to say it enough for us to kind of catch the idea of it and everything. And so we are starting a thing, we actually saw it from someplace else, but there are really good advantages to it, and so we'll call it Saturation Saturday. Saturation Saturday. So one of the things that we realized over time as we go forward that um, things change, patterns and habits of people change, people go out a little bit less than they did before, or whatever it is, uh, but we think it's vitally, vitally important really for a majority of our people to be involved in outreach in some way. And so on the first Saturday of every month, so to work out to where it'll be um, on this Saturday, <clears throat> so just as we roll it out and now six days later, uh, we'll be having our very first Saturation Saturday. But being on the first of the month, it also works perfectly for us to be able to have handout flyers, invite flyers for the different things that are going on Easter or uh, Friend Day, Roundup Day or whatever it is. And so we'll do those at that time also, just saturating and getting out the message. So we're going to meet here at 930. During the saturation Saturdays, we're going to meet back in room 220 because that's the largest room. Uh, and then the other weeks we'll meet as we have been in room 211 until we just outgrow that on the regular Saturdays. And then, of course, we'll be back there in 220 all the time as we go forward. So it's on this Saturday at 9.30. I encourage you so much to come and to be here. We are signing up in the different classes, and hopefully your teacher really pushed it hard. And we'll be encouraging your teacher to further contact uh, the people in their class again this week uh, for us to be able to be here on Saturation Saturday. Hopefully that most all of you in the room here will get invited by somebody to come and to be here. We'll pair you up with uh, someone who's done it before or knows a little bit of something to do and uh, uh, you'll be able to go together. So if it's your very first time, or if you haven't done it in a long time, you won't have to be the lead person. You just come and go and that's how you'll learn to do that more and more. So we're really encourage you now to come for Saturation Saturday. Uh, also then, uh, we were challenge you about uh, the communication survey. One of the things that we don't do well and we want to really make a push towards this is to uh, do more things in order to inform our people. Uh, Facebook is fine, but many, many people are not on there. Uh, when you do put some kind of an announcement on our Facebook group, it's a very small percentage of our people overall. And many people, you'll see this happen, many people will see it four days later, seven days later, and by that time it really isn't uh, valid anymore if it were an event or something like that. And so we want to be able to communicate with you better. Uh, you can identify uh, the types of communication that you want to be able to receive and they'll fall into a different category. If we're sending out an invite for a special day uh, or if it's a ladies conference, if it's men's uh, prayer breakfast or whatever, we'll target at those that way by you identifying and filling that out and so we want to encourage you now to do that so it's in the bulletin and you'll be able to just to uh, take your your smartphone uh, just go to your photos and then it will link you to that it'll take just not even 30 seconds 60 seconds to fill that out if you didn't do that this morning you can do that now here this evening also and so next Sunday next Sunday right on uh, Sunday morning right in the Sunday morning service is vision Sunday what we'll do is two things We'll take a moment just to rejoice about some things that the Lord has done in this past year and just praise the Lord and thank him for that and rejoicing about what he's done. <clears throat> and then we will um, just share some vision just through prayer and just the Lord's leading for us. Uh, some of the things will be a big step and it'll be a big step of faith and we're just trusting God uh, to really open doors and to uh, enable us to be able to go forward uh, in some different areas and so we're just trusting God uh, in that and so we want to be able to present that we want to get our people on board uh, with what it is that we believe that the Lord has for us and so there, we have the Bible reading records out there so you have one for the adult or the regular through the Bible in one year there are boxes to check off as you read and then also two versions of a children that does the New Testament or just really does Psalms and Proverbs but it helps to keep them track where they are as they go forward through um, through the Bible 
uh, in, this, in this year of 2023. And so we're so thankful for that. And we're so thankful for all of what the Lord has done. Uh, let's go ahead, if we would, and receive our offering. Uh, and then right after the offering, Brother Jeremy's going to come and preach for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings financially this last, uh, last year. We thank you, Lord, just for providing with missions and with through the tithe for the needs in the church. We just rejoice, Lord, in your goodness. And we thank you and we praise you for that. And God, I want to pray, please, now that you would bless in this time. Uh, as we would receive the offering, as we would get started in this new year. Bless, I pray in the offering, bless in the message to come. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for that. Uh, go over in your Bible to Genesis chapter number 32. Genesis chapter number 30. We're going to be looking at a, a story in the life of Jacob. Story in the life of Jacob. And I, I guess I, I didn't even think about it this time, but uh, whenever I uh, preach or uh, have the opportunity to preach on Sunday nights or Wednesday nights or, or whatever it is, uh, I started to prepare for it, and then halfway through I realized, like, oh, this is the Old Testament again, and Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, but it's what I teach here in Gospel of Baptist Academy to our 11th and 12th graders, and it's, it's where I keep finding myself going back to. I know that uh, Josh makes fun of me about that sometimes, so I'll get it out of the way so he doesn't have to this week in our staff meeting or whatever else. So we're in the beginning. We're in Genesis, uh, but there's just something great. I, I love story and how stories play out and how they teach truths. I don't know if... If it was Dr. Seuss at a young age or what I was read, I don't know. But uh, it's just to me, it's, it's interesting. And the truths that bear out are just incredible. And Jacob is another one of those people uh, that I love reading about and, uh, and following his life. And I know this is a Sunday night crowd. And so uh, a lot of you have taught through here or certainly have read through here. Because it's in Genesis at the beginning of the Bible, many of us have read this story you know, 70 times. Now we've never gotten, you know, much into the old the minor prophets or whatever else. But at the start of the year, we'll read this story somewhere before, uh, you know, we, we maybe fail on our Bible schedule or whatever else. But we're at least very familiar with Genesis. And Jacob is a guy uh, that his whole life, it's one of those, he's a frustrating character, right? Because you think, man, there's so much potential there, uh, but you just find him tripping and tripping and tripping again and again and again. And whenever I get frustrated reading characters like that, I just think, man, how many people in that Hebrews 11 great throng of people look down and say, Jeremy Lenentine, you're a very frustrating character because it just seems like you have, you know, you could do this or you have potential or whatever else, but you constantly find yourself tripping over this or tripping over that. And so that helps me to not get too hard on different characters in the Old Testament because don't we see ourselves in a lot of people, right? And uh, they should have a quiz on Facebook or something, you know, uh, which Bible character are you most like, right? You know, you're most like David, you're most like, you know, whoever else. And some of us would really identify with some of these if we'd stop and think about it. Genesis chapter number 32. Uh, we're going to look in starting in verse number 17. Backstory for this, for those of you just to where we're jumping in cold in this story. Uh, Jacob has <clears throat> spent his life kind of 
uh, going at it with his brother and tricking him and deceiving him and, and whatever else. And it's a pattern that he's fallen into. Uh, he, he changed jobs, he changed locations, and he was still a trickster. And he still kind of was up to the old ways or whatever else. I was talking to a man out soul winning yesterday, and he said <clears throat> that he spent a lot of years angry and frustrated at a lot of people and losing his temper and this different relationship and fighting here, whatever else. And he said, it took me 35 years to realize that the common denominator in all of that was me, and I was the problem. And he said, it took me a long time in my 50s to understand I was the one who was messing up and fouling all these relationships. And when I figured that out, he said, it's amazing how things were able to turn around. Well, Jacob was going to come to a spot here where through circumstance, and obviously, as we understand as Christians, the divine providence of God, he was going to get forced into a situation where there was no more running, backs against the wall, and he just has to have a time and opportunity of doing business with God. And that's what we're getting into. This moment where Jacob finally has all of these years of running and deceiving and tricking and manipulating or whatever, finally it all comes to a head. In this passage that we're going to look at this evening, verse number 17 says this. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Who art thou? Whose art thou? Uh, and whither goest thou? And whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say unto they, are they, they, they be thy servants, Jacob. For it is a present, send unto my lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. And so he commanded that to the second, to the third, and all that followed the drove, saying, On this manner ye shall speak unto Esau when ye shall find him. And ye shall say, Moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward I will see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. Man, how much do we... Uh, spend our life just trying to be accepted of people, right? Not realizing really we're supposed to be accepted of God. But here Jacob's up to it again. Instead of coming to his brother and saying, hey, I messed up many years ago. This is what I did and this is how I manipulated you and, and here's all my wrongs. He said, here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to try to appease him. I'm going I'm to try to pay him off. I'm going to try to uh, give him an offering. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. And he, he's still trying to manipulate the circumstances, to land somewhere in his favor. Verse number 21. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and 11 sons and passed over the ford, Jabbok, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over all that he had. What I want to talk this evening about is in the story of Jacob, is just finally getting to that spot where you come face to face with what you need to come face to face with. And Jacob had spent a lot of time running. And then finally, <clears throat> we're going to see three things. And if, if you're going to write down anything, I'll just write down three simple statements that I want you to write down. That finally happened in the, in the life of, uh, of Jacob. And because of that, Jacob finally, finally got to a place where he started getting on the right track. And he started making traction in his Christian life. Before this, it had all been kind of self-willed, good-intentioned, but self-willed, all prideful, all, all kind of directed and deceitful and all whatever else. But finally, when he got to these three points and did these three things, then finally Jacob was able to make some headway in his Christian life. And the first one is this. You can write it down. Jacob got alone <clears throat> before God. Jacob got alone before God. Let's read that verse together, the next verse. In verse number 24. It said this, and Jacob was left alone. And Jacob was left alone. He finally got to a spot where he was alone with God. All that time before, man, there was all kinds of commotion and there was people. There was a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of kids in the house or whatever else. And, and he finally sent that all over. I don't know if, if some of you that have kids or whatever, if you've ever been home as a parent, uh, when there's just no kids there whatsoever and it's just quiet, and it's just you sitting in your house and you're like, this is a, it's a weird feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this feeling, right? But you wouldn't like it permanently. It's just like, you know, if I could just have like, like no, two months of this, you know, whatever it is, right? Just that, that calm of that, of that peace and quiet of, of just, you can hear yourself think. We as human beings very rarely have those moments in our life. Now, not, not that we couldn't have them. A lot of times we refuse to have them. 
I remember when, uh, I think it was Jasper Wisdom was preaching, probably in a chapel that we were both in. And he's saying the reason why teenagers and young people or whatever drive around with the music cranked up so loud that four cars behind them, uh, you know, can still hear it or whatever it is. He said they refuse to be alone with their thoughts because if they ever would, the Holy Spirit would start to talk to them. Yes. And I thought, that's crazy. I don't believe it. Turn up to music. <laughs> but he was right. Even in scenarios where we could be quiet before God, where we could have some peace and quiet and we could really think and, and I talk to God and God talk to me, we, we push those scenarios away. And listen, I, I like being a productive person, trying to always listen to something or growing and listening to this or, or, or this story or listening to this thing and, and doing this thing or whatever else. How often do we just simply get alone? Yeah. Yeah. Alone before God. There was a, uh, a, a, a TV series and uh, it was called this, this title, Alone. And I remember for a couple months, me and my wife got into the series, and so we down, we we kind of watch it or whatever else. And uh, typically, our manner is is that we start watching, and 15 minutes in, she falls asleep, and then I watch for another like two hours or whatever. That's kind of our pattern that we do or whatever. And so um, there was this series, and what it is basically is it's it's alone. They they take like 10 to 12 contestants or whatever, and they take them way up into Canada somewhere, or they take them into Patagonia or whatever, and they drop them off, and whoever survives the longest alone wins whatever amount of money, whatever it is. And so after watching the story, you know, this for a while, it was, it was interesting to me. And then we start to take, you know, bets or whatever. I think this person's going to make it. I think this person's going to survive the longest or whatever else. And they just, they just leave you there. And you could take like 12 items and that's it. So take some things for shelter, take some tarps or whatever else. And whoever lasted the longest. And I remember watching these different folks and I would be like, I was almost sure that person's going to be the winner this year. This person's going to survive the longest, you know, this person or whatever. And I've always thought if, if Jeremy Howe was on there, he would definitely win, you know, or whatever. But I remember there was this one guy and, and uh, he was a public school teacher and uh, he taught wilderness hiking as a public school teacher or whatever. And uh, he was saying, uh, he, his big thing was, I have a positive mental attitude, positive mental attitude, PMA, PMA. And I'm going to survive because I have a positive mental attitude, you know. And he was kind of one of these like, you know, equality, you know, inclusion people or whatever. So I was just really rooting for him to kind of not be the one to one or whatever, right? And so, of course, like, like 32 hours in, he, he was like, I can't, he's crying, can't do it anymore. You know, he got out of there or whatever else, you know. And I always make fun of those people, even though that would be me after like four hours, right? And so he was off the island right away. And then there was this one pastor, I remember he was, he was a missionary for a while, then he came back or whatever, and, and uh, he had a couple of girls or whatever else, and, and uh, he went on this show. And I thought, there's, there's no way. Literally, like, he's a pastor, like a pastor, like Toby's a pastor. And he's out there, and you're like, there's no way this guy's going to survive. He knew nothing about the outdoors, whatever else. But he just got in this spot where he just kept catching fish all the time. And he'd always have these breakdowns and, like, crying about how much he misses home or whatever else. But he made it, like, 64 days, and he won the whole thing. And so, you know what I realized after watching this show, like, a couple of seasons is, I literally had no clue who was going to survive and who wasn't going to. Because the truth is, is that we don't really know anything about somebody else when they're all alone. We don't know. I see you here in a company, in a group. I see you with your family. I see you serving in this ministry. I see you around church or whatever else. I see your hey brother face and your handshaking time and your singing face, all that other stuff. But I don't know what you're like alone. You don't know what I'm like alone. And it's really, really hard to predict because only you know what you're like when you're alone. Because we can hide in a crowd, but we can't really hide all alone, can we? And so what do we do? We wear these masks uh, to try to cover up different things. And we'll talk about these masks in just a couple uh, of, of seconds here. I'll give you the first one that I thought about and wrote down, and that is the mask of a crowd. What is that? That's group identity, right? We are a gospel light Baptist church. We're a singing church. We're a praising church. We're a soul winning church. And so we wear these masks of the crowd that kind of carry us along for a while. Maybe there's the mask of... Parents, and that'd be heritage. Those of you that have grown up going to church like, like I have, right? There's a lot of things like, oh, oh, hey, Jeremy, we know your family. You come from a great family or this or that or whatever else. But that wasn't me. That was my family. But it was a mask that I got to wear. Say, oh, yeah, I'm a Lenentine. Yeah, you, you know my dad or you know, I'm this or I'm that or whatever. It, it wasn't me. It's just a mask. Maybe it's a mask of, of works, we like to do good deeds. And so because of that, it kind of excuses other things in our life because we're always doing good deeds. But we're able to get away with other things because we do good deeds. Maybe it's a mask of effort. You like to stay busy. 
Man, you're always known as the busy person. You're always doing things and doing and doing. And hey, can I do it? Brother, I'd hate to ask this. I know you're already so busy. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And we, we just put it on there because that's the mask that we're used to wearing. Maybe it's the mask of victimhood. That's a big one today, right? Victim had so much uh, value today, right? Well, this happened to me and I was raised this way. And this traumatic event happened to me. And that's the mask that people hide behind. But when the mask come off, that's when Jacob was finally just alone. Alone. Speaking of mask, I remember when I was about probably, I was probably 15, and uh, Mark was probably 13. And it was, a, it, was, it was a Halloween, and we were all at home this one night. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, my dad wasn't there that night, so it was just, you know, Anna was younger or whatever, and so it was us and mom at home or whatever. I don't know if he was off trick-or-treating or I don't know where dad was. But anyways, he was out there. He wasn't there. So I remember it's starting to get dark. It's like 8 o'clock or whatever, and we hear this knock on the door. And so, you know, it was probably like, you know, other trick-or-treaters or whatever. We didn't take pardon or whatever else, and, you know, we weren't going to spend money on something we didn't believe in. So we just, you know, we turn off the light. We played the hush games. We turn off all the lights, you know, and like, don't let anybody see you. And so we'd, we'd done that game or whatever, but this dude was persistent. He starts knocking on the door again, knocking on the door again, and then it's like more of like a pounding, like pounding on the door. I'm like, this kid really wants some candy, you know? Like, it's been a rough night, I don't know. So I go and open up the door, and there's a guy standing there, teenager, I don't know, whatever, and he's wearing one of those older, if you remember like from the Scream movies, kind of the Scream mask, whatever, right? The yawning kind of face or whatever. And he's just standing there, and just a couple feet away, and he has a tiny ukulele in his hand. And he's just playing on the ukulele, right? Just looking at me. And he's wearing a mask. I don't know if he's smiling deviously or if he's, you know, serious or if he, you know, ill intentions or whatever. I don't know. He's just playing that ukulele and just looking at me. And so we're just staring at each other for a couple minutes. He doesn't say anything. I don't say anything. And so I just close the door on him, right? And he, he walks away. That was weird. 30 minutes later, same pounding on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Look to the people. Same guy. Stand, this time we don't answer the door. I'm not answering the door. You answer it. I'm not going to answer it. You answer it. No. no one answers the door. He's just standing there just playing the ukulele. This happens a couple more times. And so I'm thinking, I'm like, there's, at this point, we were kind of a smaller church. There's no full-time youth pastor. So usually, like, Toby would be the one to get all the pranks. But so I was thinking, maybe it's someone from our church. Is it someone that we know? I don't know. Whatever. And so finally, I don't know who suggested it. But uh, we were talking to my mom, you know, do we call the cops? They won't get here in time. He's going to leave or whatever else. And so someone had the bright idea. Look, next time he comes, we do have a paintball gun, right? And so what we should do is we, and I'm, look, I'm not the adult. She was the adult. I don't know why she signed off on this. What we should do, though, is, is Mark will open the door and kind of just go in behind it, right? And then it'll be me right there, and I'll have the paintball gun, right? And I'll just unload on him real quick, and then Mark will close the door really fast or whatever, right? And so that was typically how it was, kind of Mark hit or whatever, and I took care of business or whatever. So that was our plan, right? That was what we were going to do. And so we were going to execute this plan. And then my mom was like, I'll be in the hallway in case I need to call the cops. And I'm like, what? You're, you know, whatever. So she was over there. And so sure enough, a couple minutes later, whatever, knock comes on the door. I saw her, get everything ready. Okay, fine. This is going to be great. So I'm standing there, just a couple feet back from the door, right? Mark's there, you know, like all nervous or whatever, you know, give him the nod. So he opens up the door. And as soon as I did, and as soon as he did, I'm standing there with a gun or whatever. And the guy's mouth just dropped. No, I don't know. It was a mask. It was already there. So he was just still looking the same or whatever, right? But you could tell that he was freaked out because he kind of, he does one of these, he takes two steps back and he's going like this, right? Like, like it's not funny anymore. And I'm like, well, it's too late. We're already here, right? Like, how did you think this was going to end? What am I supposed to do now, right? So I just start unloading on him with the, with the, with the paintball gun. Like 16 shots. Of him. And he starts backing up as he's getting hit. And we had a row of bushes around our house. He goes to turn. He falls in the bushes, right? So now he's just laying, you know, in the bushes, in his dress or whatever, kind of whatever. And I'm just kind of walking, just, bah, 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 just shooting him, right? Run inside and close the door real quick. And, and Mark's freaking out. He's yelling. He runs to the door. He's cussing. He's slammed, knocking on the door, whatever. Ah, all this other stuff or whatever. And he left and he never came back anymore. Because we decided to take care of business. But here's the point of it, right? Have some weapons you can use at your house. No, the point is this. If he would have just taken off the mask, I wouldn't have had to do that. 
If he would have just been honest about who he was, right? This is who I am. Or, oh, that was a funny prank or whatever. But this went on and on and on and on. And it never happened. He just went with the mask. He went with the mask. And he pushed me into a spot where literally, I, I mean, there was a lot of other choices. But that's the route that happened. That's the route we went. <laughs> because he was trying to hide behind the mask. And we have, it's a funny story and it's great. And I'm, and I'm going to tell it till I die. And it gets bigger and better every time I tell it, right? But here's the point is that we have masks too that we're more comfortable in wearing because we like the way that they look more than anything else. I could look, I don't take a lot of pictures or whatever else, but for some of you, you know exactly which Instagram filters to use, right? Because they're the ones that make you look the best. We get in spots where we, we like the masks that we get used to wearing. And this is what Jacob was. But once you get alone with God and you're willing to be sincere and say, okay, God, this is all just me right here. That hurts because oftentimes as sinful human beings, even as veteran Christians or, or mature Christians or whatever else, we don't like what we see in the mirror when we're there without a mask. And Jacob certainly didn't like it either. The second thing that I want you to write down is this, is Jacob gets broken before God. First off, he got to a spot where he was alone with God. He's willing to take time to say, okay, God, it's just you and me. Nothing else, no other distractions. But then secondly, he was willing to get broken before God. He was willing to do something when he got alone with God. Look at verse number uh, 24. We read the first part. It says, and Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now we go through this whole story to reach this point in the story right here. Where there's this angel that appears and, and Jacob starts to wrestle with him. And I don't know if you've ever wrestled before, uh, maybe as kids are growing up or whatever else. Uh, but if you've wrestled, you know that if someone gets you in that hole, right, and, and you want to be able to, to get out of that. Maybe you can't breathe or you feel like, man, I, I haven't done this very long. If you think about Jacob's strength of wrestling until the break of dawn, like after 10 minutes of wrestling someone, you're exhausted. And someone gets you in that spot, where I don't know if it's a chokehold or they just got you to where you finally, and, and I don't know if you've been there before, I certainly have been there before wrestling people, where I tell them like, okay, all right, good, you win. It's over, it's done. And they don't let go. And you say, no, 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 it, it's fine, it's fine. You win, you win, you win. And they don't want to let go. They won't let go of you because you know what they're waiting for? They're waiting for that right there. And until they feel that, on the ground or on them, they're not going to let go. And there's no words that's spoken with that, but it says a hundred things, doesn't it? Sure. It says, I'm weak. You're better than me. You got the best of me. You won. I'm a loser. <laughs> You're more worthy than I, whatever it is. And so you don't let him get away with just saying like, okay, man, it's cool. Like we both win. No, 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 no. <laughs> We don't both win because you're going to tap out. And until you do, I'm going to hold you right here. And that's where Jacob got to where he was finally broken with God. And then we get to verse number 27 and the angel finally asks him this question. And whenever I read through here, it's such a pivotal question when you read through here. I always think of it like the angel gets to that spot and he finally pops the question, right? Right? That moment where he pops the question. I, we, we, we teach a couple's class, and so I like asking people, like, you know, and you, you probably ask people too, you know, well, how, you know, how did they propose or whatever else. And you hear all kinds of crazy stories. There's a couple that, uh, their, their story is hilarious. They were both, uh, like, kind of in their 20s or whatever, and they were playing Xbox Live against each other. And he uh, thinks, like, hey, she sounds pretty cute. And so he starts to talk to her as they're just, you know, shooting zombies or whatever, I don't know, and finds out that she lives in Albuquerque and he lives in, in Texas somewhere. And so a couple weeks later, they're playing again or whatever, and he said, I want to come out and meet you. So he arranged it, and he drives out to meet her. Never had seen her before. 
And then they start to date and they fall in love and they get engaged. That's a crazy one. Another story that I heard that was kind of crazy was this guy was at her house and he was installing a window and some glass and trying to put it in there, whatever else. And then holding it, it slipped, it fell and it gashed open his hand, big time, huge gash. And so she's freaking out, you know, she's in her 20s or whatever else and all kinds of blood and I'll, I'll, I'll take you, whatever. And so she loads him up in, in the car, in her car, and uh, she throws in a reverse and backs out and slams into his car. <laughs> Flustered and freaking out and pulls up again and then backs out a different way and drives him to the hospital. And as they're driving to the hospital, he says, you know what, I've been meaning to ask you, will you marry me? That's where he asked her. <laughs> In that moment, I don't know if he thought, like, if she's in a moment of weakness, if she's queasy from seeing blood, I don't know, whatever. But she said yes, and they had been married for, when I met them, like 13, 14 years at this point or whatever. And so people have weird scenarios and stories of how they get to that question. But the angels got Jacob in this moment, right? He's about to make him tap out. And he asked him the question. He asked him this question in verse number 27. He said unto him, what is thy name? What is thy name? Now, did he wrestle a guy for eight hours and not know his name? He knew his name. But Jacob needed to know his name, didn't he? In asking that question, the angel was asking him this. Who are you? Now that we're alone, now that you've taken, dropped all of the facades and all the masks or whatever, else, let me ask you this question. Who are you? I want you to notice three things that the angel didn't ask him. He didn't ask him, who do you want to be? Sometimes we're delusional when we live here because we want to be a lot of things, don't we? If you talk to kids, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to be or whatever else? And, and I, won't, I won't pick on him by name, but we have one kid that this changes like every six hours for him, right? And he's always, he's always changing and not with this or that. Or wait a minute, just yesterday you wanted to, you can't keep up. It's all right. Just, I think we'll just flip a coin, right? At graduation, like, okay, that's what you are, you know, whatever it is. But we as adults often live in the, what we want to be. I was listening to a, a, a podcast about a, a financial podcast. And this guy called in and he, and he was laying out all of these dreams of what he wanted to do and I want to be this or whatever else and I'm just working this temporary gig. I think he was a cab driver or whatever. Just working this temporary gig so I can save up enough money because if this happens, this happens and, and we'll do this and, and then I'll finally be able to reach this. And he had all this crazy dream. And the financial advisor asked him, he said, okay, this... Second, this temporary job that you've been doing, how long have you been doing that? How long have you been driving cab or whatever? And the guy said, well, it's been eight years. And the financial host wisely asked him, he said, what is your definition of temporary? How many years have you wanted to be a certain type of Christian? But you've never really been that Christian. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I'm going to this and this, and, and here's what, and, and I was listening to this and this. And that, that's great. That's great. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, who are you? January 1st, 2023, who are you? I know what you want to be. I know what your brain tells you and all this and, and all this and this, uh, but, but who are you right now? That's kind of what's important, right? The second thing that the angel didn't ask him, but he could have, he didn't ask him, who were you before? Sometimes when we live in the past, it's often romanticized and abstract and we get stuck in the past. Jacob could have said, here's all of the things that I did. And let me tell you about this one story. And all of these things of just living in the past, living in the past and living in the past. In, in our house, when someone kind of goes on about the past and how great the past was and how they were in the past or whatever else, um, my, my wife calls that, she'll say, she'll say, okay, okay, Uncle Rico. Because there's this one character, and I don't know if you've ever seen Napoleon Dynamite, and if you haven't, don't, because it's a, a pointless waste of time. But this is Uncle Rico. And Uncle Rico's whole thing is, is that he was a subpar, washed out, backup quarterback in high school. And if the coach would have just put him in in the fourth quarter, they would have won state. They would have won state. They would have done it. And so Rico's always talking constantly about what he was in the past. In the past, oh, if you would have seen me in my 20s and I could throw this football over those mountains, right? All of this stuff of what he was in the past. But what is he? He's a guy who lives in that van. In the present. 
with no job and no money and no future because he's stuck just in the past. Go to the next one. It's the same one. So we're not asking who do you really, really want to be. We're not asking who you were before. And look, Gospelite, hey, if we were before great at soul winning, or we were before great at this, or if you were before this great Bible teacher, you were before all of these things, I don't think God's that much interested in it because we're in the present right now, aren't we? The third question the angel didn't ask him, but he could have asked him. He didn't ask him this, though. He didn't say, who will you be? Because future thinking is often very wishful and distant, isn't it? Oh, in 10 years, this is where I'm going to be. And, and you know, I, I'm not there now. I know I've got none of the pieces right now. But you just wait. You just, you come and see me in five years. And you can see what I'll be. But sometimes when we stop and we, we put ourselves in this current mode right here, who are we currently? Who are we currently? Christian, who are we currently, Gospel Light Baptist Church? If you could, I wanted you to play a quick game with me, all right? If you have a pen, so you got a pen, right? Okay, if not, just take your phone. I'm going to ask you four questions, and I want you to answer these four questions, okay? And we're going to do this. The answer you put down is just the number of weeks, okay? So if it's been one week, you put down one. If it's been 10 weeks, you put down 10. If you can't think, just try to estimate as best you can. Let's play a quick game, okay? Four questions. Here we go. Everybody loves these type of games. What are they going to be, all right? I'm asking you about you, my favorite subject. Here we go, right? Number one, when was the last time, again, your answer will be in the number of weeks. When was the last time you prayed hard, sincerely, for a lost person who needed to be saved? It was the last time. If it's been one week, write down. If it's been in this week, you know, that's zero weeks. It's, it's current. Maybe it's been 10 weeks since you've really prayed hard for a lost person to be saved. Maybe it's, it's over a year. That's 52 weeks. Just write down some number for me if you could. When was the last time you prayed sincerely for a lost person who needed to be saved? Number two. When was the last time you handed someone a gospel track? If it's been one week right now, has it been five weeks? Has it been 10 weeks? When was the last time you handed someone a gospel track? Maybe shamefully for some of us, it's, it's been well over a year. Just put some large number up there. We don't really know, right? How long has it been? Question number three. When was the last time that you gave the gospel to somebody? The plan of salvation. Hey, let me show you these verses from the Bible. You're able to go. Maybe they stopped you after point two. That's okay. You can count that. You, you know, that you tried, right? You were giving them the plan of salvation. Whatever it is. How long has it been? One week, five weeks, 10 weeks, 20 weeks. How long has it been? Last question. Why are you not as, we're not as enthusiastic as playing this game as we were like two minutes ago, right? <laughs> Number four. When was the last time God allowed you to see someone saved? I'm not asking a Sunday morning crowd. Hey, come on now. I'm not asking a Sunday morning crowd. I'm asking a Sunday night crowd. When was the last time that you saw somebody saved? Now, let me ask you a question. Based on the exercise we've done in the last two minutes, can you and I honestly say, or can you honestly say before God and yourself, are you a person who is passionate about reaching the lost? Are you a soul winner? You yourself based on what you just wrote there. Now, every single one of us, I promise you, even if for all of those, it was been in the last week, so there's zeros, you just recently did that, I promise you that even that person says, I wish I could do more to get out the gospel. That person has a heart. But in a group this size, in a modern day church, in 2023 in America, we probably have a lot of shameful responses in the last two minutes. Let me ask you this then. The church is just made up of individual Christians, right? You, I, we're all here together. That's what Gospel Light Baptist Church is. It's not a building. It's not a mystical thing. It's all just us together. So based on all of our collective answers together, right there, what we just did, would I be honest in saying Gospel Light Baptist Church is a soul-winning church? Now, we say it all the time. I don't want to be false advertising, though. But could I honestly say, this group of believers, we are a soul-winning church. We're passionate about reaching the lost. We're passionate about reaching God's Rio Rancho and Albuquerque for Christ. 
Every one of our answers goes in summation to answer that question. Yes, we're a soul winning church. Yes, we're a church with a heart for the lost. Or no, not really, but we better start. Now you could do that same thing for a number of things. How good of a parent are you? How consistent are you with the Bible, right? How good are you at praying? A whole number of things. My, my goal tonight is not just to make us feel sad or pathetic or whatever. But the point is this, is that a lot of times we live either in what we used to do, what I really want to do, my aspirations, or what I plan on doing in the future, that Christian that I will be someday. But the truth is, I am the Christian that I am today. That's what I am. And when that angel finally got Jacob to that point and broke him, he finally said, he let, let me ask you this question, Jacob. Who are you? And what did Jacob say? Jacob said, I'm a supplanter. I'm a deceiver. I'm a crook. I'm dishonest. That's what I actually am. That's the spot that Jacob got to. And the last thing is this. And this is a good thing. Jacob was determined to get God's best. Verse number 28, or verse number 27, he finishes, he says, and he said, Jacob. Verse number 28, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. You know what's amazing? Here's what's so amazing about this. And this is what God does in our life. When God finally gets us to stop running and admit who we are, God didn't chastise Jacob. He didn't rub his face in it. He didn't give him a lecture. He said, all right, here's what you're going to be instead. Here's the plan that I have for you instead. I have you as a prince of Israel instead. So many times we think if we're honest before God, that that's when his judgment's going to come. No, 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 no. When we get honest before God, that's when he can actually start blessing in our lives. Because Jacob was determined and he said, God, if I have to look myself in the mirror, if I have to admit all this before you and you already know it and I'm the one who needs to admit it, right? Jacob was determined to get God's best. There's a verse that Pastor uh, did this morning on the next slide there um, from Jeremiah. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You know what that verse tells us? is that there are a lot of people who search for God with half their heart. How many of you have ever searched for God with just a portion of your heart? Yeah? All right, God, let's, what do you got for me in the Bible today? All right, Lord, please bless my family and all my neighbors and everyone in the world. But here's, here's what God said. Here's when you're going to find me. When you search for me with all your heart. And Jacob finally got to a spot where he said, okay, God, here's fully who I am, but God, here's what I want. I want you. I want your best for my family, for my life, for my Christian walk and Christian service. And if we'll do those three things, if we'll be willing to get alone with God, if we'll be willing and finally to a spot where we're broken before God, Determining that we want God's absolute best. That's what I want, God. That's what I'm after. Your best in my life. Then God's at a spot where he says, perfect. This is where I've wanted you to be the entire time. But we spend a lot of time running from that instead of getting to that spot where we can be alone and honest before God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. With no one looking around, I'm just going to ask a couple of simple questions. How many of you would be willing and honest to say, you know what, I don't know that I really pursued God in the way that I needed to or I wanted to last year, but by God's grace, I'd like to change that in 2023. How many of you, that's true for you? Hands up, hands all around the room. Amen, praise the Lord. Jacob's formula is simple, and it's the same throughout thousands and thousands of years. Get alone with God, and when you get there, do real business with God. That's what an altar is for. And look, I know you could stay out there and I know you could pray at your seat and I know God hears you there. There's no magical powers about an altar, but there's something about getting on your knees before God and saying, okay, Lord, it's all you. I need you in my life.
Lord, I pray that you might help in this invitation time. Thank you for everything that you've done in our lives and our hearts. Lord, thank you for our church, God. Lord, what a great year. Not a bad year, a great year, Lord, but I realize in my own life, God, that I could do more and I could be more for you, God. Help each and every one of us, Lord, if we've been hiding behind any types of mask in our life, Lord, we just get alone with you and say, okay, God, I want what's best for you, from you in my life, in my family's life, and in Gospel Light Baptist Church in this coming year. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, that is so good, it's so good, so good. Right here at the first of the year, we need that so very much, don't we? It's exactly, exactly what I need myself in my own life. We just kind of drift into apathy, so that challenge about how many weeks in each of those different areas, but to learn the lessons from Jacob and from his life, and through that, that God humbled him and that God turned him uh, back to himself and that God had something uh, so very good for Jacob, but he had to, again, turn him back to himself in order to, uh, to be able to really use him. Brother Jeremy, thank you for that. That was so very, very, very good. I was just sitting there. There's so many people that need to hear that. And so what I'm going to do, maybe about an hour out or so, is I'm going to make a post on Gospel Light. Now, this is our group for our church. So if you're on Facebook at all, make sure that you request um, a membership. Make sure you request to be accepted in a Gospel Light. Uh, we only accept our people in. It's not, you know, all these people that from, from places all around, all around the world or whatever. It's just a place where we share and communicate our um, information, our praises, our events, and things like that. So I'm going to put that onto Gospel Light. I'm going to make a link for Facebook sermon and the start time, YouTube sermon and the start time. Uh, and what I want you to do, and I mean this sincerely, I want for you to take and to share that onto your page, and I want there to be a hundred shares, okay? And I want just to push it out so that a number of other people can see that. It'll be a help to so many different believers, and, uh, and hopefully most of all, my prayer would be to be a help to a lot of people, but most of all, my prayer is it'll be a help to us sitting in this room right now, amen? And so that's what I'd want for us. It's so good. Thank you, brother. It's so, so good. <clears throat> so... I didn't think that you shot 16 times, first off, I just want you to know. So I think that was an exaggeration. It wasn't on Halloween, other. So 
And what I was doing that night was I was out soul winning. So, and I have no idea why you weren't. Amen. Amen. But when I came back, my wife was frantic, and she had me, like, for the next hour, drive all around the neighborhood and make sure a guy with a scream mask wasn't still walking around. So, amen. And so, they, at that point, they thought they shouldn't call the cops after they shot him with a paintball gun. So, um, <clears throat> so let's pray, if we would, and let's be dismissed. I love you guys. We're so excited about the start of this new year and all of what the Lord has for us. And Heavenly Father... I pray, I pray that you would bless us and lead us now as we, would, uh, as we would go forth from here. Thank you, Lord, for a great, great, great first day of 2023. Thank you for the faithfulness of our people that are here. Lord, I know some are sick, some are away, and all those things. But, Lord, please help us uh, just on Wednesday and then next Sunday just to really get in strong and faithful. And I pray that 2023 would have an increase of faithfulness. And so, Lord, just really bless us in this. Really bless and help us now. Lead us in this, we pray. Pray, we'd ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen.